how impressive has Daylon Terry been these last really? few weeks? We got to talk about it. And then DeMar DeRozan gets real about the injuries to the Chicago Bulls. And then we're going to end the show with a message from one of our guys. Corn. Y'all know we're going to talk about it and break it down. But you know, you got to hear the music first. Cognac, yeah, yeah. Shy Bulls Podcast with the Cognac Boys. I'm Cognac Boy Bobby, and I am with my dog, C Dub. How you doing, boy? I'm feeling great, man. Let's go. Y'all already know, if you're tuned in with us today, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell as well. Now, C-Dub, we've had a lot of talks surrounding our young guys early on. Kobe White. Yes. Then a little bit of Patrick Williams. We sprinkled a little up in there for Patrick Williams. He was he was a little sprinkle. Then, Iodo Sumo. We talked a lot about him. But one guy who seemed like it's all starting to calm down and slow down for him. Dalen Terry deserves to be inserted in the conversation. C-Dub, so far, last few weeks, hell, maybe even the whole season. How impressive has Dalen Terry been, in your opinion? Man, this is very impressive. Probably one of the greatest stories we got running on the uh, Chicago Bulls. And and if you can believe it, we got a lot of good stories going on in this organization. Uh, Dale and Terry, man, I know he had to be frustrated last year, bro. You just you could just look at him and he he was a, a constant professional. He got there out there. He was the best dancer in the NBA last season, <laughs> carrying on his team and rooting them on and uh, pumping them up, being a chip. I ain't going to say a cheerleader, but cheering his team on to victory. But this season, that game didn't slow down, bro. He just kept kept his head down and continued to get better on the basketball court. He just destroyed the Windy City Bulls, the, gen, the G League. He had no business there. So when he gets to the um, to the pro level this season, the defensive side of the ball is all him. It is slowed down. He's making plays, drawing charges, guarding very tough uh hard-nosed defense against some of your your best players in the NBA. He got the size and the length to do so. And uh, you know one of his greatest assets is his playmaking. And once the game slowed down to that point, it's no telling what how good this kid can be for us coming off the bench at, at first for us at, uh, at the very least. I am so proud of Dale and Terry, bro, uh, to overcome what he did, uh, that frustration that was last season, his rookie season. A lot of people counted him out, but I didn't because I liked, I liked his drive. I like his intensity on the basketball court, and I knew that once he get a chance to get on the floor, he was going to show that he belonged. And I do think after this, like, let's just call it the last two, three months, it showed that he belonged in the NBA. Yeah, because you're right. Because early on, we was like, damn, where's Dale and Terry at? We was calling yeah. for him and asking for him and said, damn, he's pretty much out of my, out of, uh, out of mind, out of sight, out of mind, because yeah. Billy Donovan was giving minutes to Julian Phillips. And then you started to see Billy Donovan kind of play with Julia Phillips a little bit in the lineup and Daylon Terry a little bit in the lineup. And now you are seeing more Daylon Terry come in off the bench before Julia Phillips. And in those minutes, you might look to the box score. If you're not a, if you're not a basketball watcher, you might look to the box score and be like, Daylon Terry didn't do nothing. Why are these guys talking about him? But if you turn on the film, you see that these guys, he's making winning plays. It's not going to always result in points for him. But if you look at one of the last games the Bulls played against the Pelicans, he had some big time plays in that in that game. And I think that's going to continue to happen. We already know the energy was infectious and he just needed more opportunity. C dub, I believe that Dalen Terry can be that that energy guy that you know what I'm saying, maybe not the villain type, like a Dylan Brooks or something like that, but that energy guy. The guy that's going to come in and provide good minutes whenever the coach gives him an opportunity. I believe Dave and Terry can absolutely transform into that. And as we always say, and you started this, 
It's pretty much Lil Wayne with all these young guys right now. There's no ceiling that we could place on these guys right now. We still got to allow these young guys time to develop. We still got to allow them to start to establish themselves within the NBA because we don't really know what any of these guys can turn out to be as of right now. Yeah, uh, that's a great point. And we've been saying that for the longest. Um, a lot of people like to say numbers don't lie, nephew. But when, when it comes to a lot of players, on, especially when you think about Dale Terry and uh, Alice Caruso, numbers don't mean shit when it when it comes to these players, nephew, because they they impact the game. Uh, not putting up the numbers that you would expect that a casual look like, oh, man, he ain't averaging 20 points and 10 assists per game. How is he impacting the game? That means you, you don't know basketball. I know numbers never lie in most cases, but when it is those certain instances, when you think about Dale and Terry and Alice Caruso, numbers don't mean shit, just to tell you the truth. And I'm with you on that because a lot of the, I think that these guys, the way that they play, they are Swiss Army knives. They give you a little bit of everything. Now, yep. Alice Caruso is further down his career than Dale and Terry, so Dale and Terry obviously has ways to go. But as of right now, you get glimpses and bits and pieces of what Dalen Terry could potentially be. You see now the three-point shot. He still got to work on it. Don't get it me is. wrong. Yeah, yeah. But he getting more confident that, and confident in that. We know that he can be able to push the ball a little bit. We know he can play make, you know, make some solid passes. We're on the defensive side. He can go ahead and sit in the defensive chair and guard players. We know that he's able to fight for uh, extra possessions for the team. We just seen that in the last game versus the Pelicans. So you're right. The box score might not always show what this type of player is. But if you watch the games, you will see that he's coming within his own. And I can't wait to see what more that he can bring to this team for sure. Yeah, yeah. And and, it, and that's been coming a common theme with us. Like I said, there's some good stories going on with the Bulls, with Ayo Dusumu, Kobe White, Julian Phillips too, Dale yep. and Terry. There's some stories there. So uh, the cupboard is not dry. It's not dry. <laughs> it ain't. For sure. Or bear. Y'all let, <laughs> let us know your thoughts below on Dale and Terry. How impressive has Dale and Terry been in your mind? And yeah. the, I, we know he still has a lot to go, so don't state the obvious. But mm -hmm. do let us know your thoughts below. Now, mm -hmm. C-Dub, DeMar DeRozan talked a lot about um, the injuries to the Chicago Bulls. And pretty much, and if, if we paraphrase everything, he said, ain't nobody going to give a damn. We got a long, we got a long quote here, but he said it's not a fight, it's a brawl. So anything goes. You gotta bite, scratch, pull, whatever you gotta do to win the game. That's kind of the mindset you gotta have. It ain't always going to be pretty. We can't expect it to be pretty. As long as we walk away with the W, that's the only thing that matters. He said it's always easy whenever you have any adversity to fold, to make excuses, to give in, whine, and complain. You don't hear that from none of us. We just mm. try and figure it out the best way we can figure it out every single day. Nothing is ideal. That's one thing I try and stress to the guys. I expect to get up every day, but I don't expect the weather to be sunny and sunshine every single day. With that, I try and make the best out of every situation I'm in. C-Dub, what's your initial reaction? It's not a lot of things that I love about DeMar DeRozan especially this season but I love his leadership and uh the way he set trying to set the tone for this final 25 games the Bulls got in this regular season this is absolutely I dare I say it's playoff time right now you gotta play each and see every single game like it's a playoff game for you could get yourself out the play in and get yourself into the sixth seed. I think it's 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 pretty academic that they're gonna be a, a play in team. But if you put in a little work, hard work, duck your head down, stop crying about it, like my man Demar Derozan say, you can find yourself in the playoffs and not be fighting to get in the playoffs. So I, I appreciate that from Demar Derozan, and like I said, one of the few things that I love out of Demar Derozan is leadership. Yeah, and that's thing that that's for the last few seasons. We always been on that, saying that Demar Derozan is taking that leadership role. He's being the guy that's in front to you know get guys in order. He was one of those get though that veteran that the Bulls counted on. You know what I'm saying? The young guys they counted on. Hey, 
anybody over, I think he said anybody over 23, he gave a number, but he was like, anybody under that under. age, you coming to work out with me. Oh, bro. And we was like, hold on. Yeah. We know, you know, I ain't trying to compare him to Zach, but we like, Zach got, you know, but that, that, it don't mean nothing. The De- DeMar DeRozan has took, taken on that leadership role, and that's something I think the Bulls value a lot. And that's yeah, something that we him, should, as NBA fans, value in this regard, C Dub. When you get a team full of young pups with no veteran leadership, you just got a team full of young, immature ass kids. Yeah. Look at the Houston Rockets before Ime Udoka got over there. Good point. Good, good example. Childish as hell. Mm-hmm. Everything. Look at the Washington Wizards right now without mm-hmm. good veteran leadership. Good, good, Jordan good Poole looks terrible. Yeah. Right now. So you st- even though a lot of us want to see the Bulls blow up and move on and pick a direction, rightfully so, I agree with you. But the what what the Bulls have in place right now, it benefits them in the long term because now we're good veterans like Nikola Vucevic, no matter how we feel about the player. He's still a, a NBA player. I believe he provides some type of leadership. You mm-hmm. still got the solid and the best leadership they can ask for in DeMar DeRozan, and now your young pups can all grow up to be good, competitive, solid NBA players. And that's what they need. That's what the Bulls need. Yeah, yeah, that's that's greatly said, man. And uh, uh, that's like I said, that's just one of the few things that I love about DeMar DeRozan. I like him as a player, but he really takes the cake when it comes to leadership, especially on this team. For uh, sure. I just, I just, I just uh, 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 echo my my nephew saying what he said about that. Absolutely. For sure. Let us know because ain't nobody going to have no excuses for the Chicago Bulls. No. We got to make it happen. So mm-hmm. let us know your comments below. But, hey, before we get up out of here, we have a message from my guy, Corn. He called in and had something to say. See, Dub, here it is. Big Corn. Bobby. See, Dub. Big Cab. Steve-O. Mr. Speak. My tone got king. What's the word? Change. Oh, man. This one is for y'all, man. For all four of y'all, man. You know what? I'm just to dub y'all the four horsemen. The black <laughs> four horsemen. Now, who is Rick Flair or Anderson? That's 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 the y'all to argue about who's Rick Flair, the top two in our Anderson. I'm not just to decide who is that. But I'm gonna say y'all are now on to me, the four horsemen of Bulls content creator. So I'm gonna give you two claps and a uh, uh, woo. <laughs> but anyway, things, I really appreciate y'all, man. Um, I just tune in to watch the live game with y'all just to hear to me, see Doug, to me, you're my favorite play-by-play, man. You know what I'm saying? I love to hear your play-by-play. Another goofy. You know, I, <laughs> I love it, bro. I love Bobby Intellect. I love Kev Calm demeanor. And I love Steve Bolden, boldness and straightforwardness, man. Y'all yeah. is the four fucking horsemen, man. And um, I appreciate everything, everything y'all do for this for this Chicago's Bull fan. Because without y'all, this this damn season, it hasn't been the funny season. It hasn't. So it's good to have some good brothers to be around, man. And I just want to show love to brothers, especially on this time of month, man, where we should show love with each other in this great Black History Month, man. And, um, you know, that's what I want to do, man. I want to show my love, my appreciation to the four motherfucking horsemen, man. Y'all straight up, man. Straight up and down, man. Love you, Kings, man. Really appreciate it, man. Shout out to Drip for introducing me to y'all, Kings, man. King Drip, Big Drip. Shout out to him. He just hit that thousand on the first. You know, I'm going to be there. You know what I'm saying? Ready to sip, sip, and celebrate with y'all, man. Man, it's just, man, like I said, man, I could I could repeat and say and say and say again how much I appreciate y'all, Kings, man. So I just want to say again, Love every single one of y'all brothers. Keep on doing what y'all doing, man. And I'm going to rock with y'all through this motherfucking wheel. Fall the motherfucking off, man. Straight up. And shout out to y'all, the four motherfucking horsemen. Woo! (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to Corn, man. C-Dub, take it away. Hey, man, shout out to my man, Corn. I told y'all that's one of my favorite people on here. 
who come and see me. I love everybody. This is one of my favorite people, Corn is. Uh hey, I am Ric Flair, just to let you know if we're talking about <laughs> horsemen. Woo! And we just do this for the love of it. We love entertaining everybody. We love sports and we love to kick it with everybody. If you want to kick it, let's have a good time. That's just what we do. That's our personalities. Every single one of us, all five of us, uh, add and drip in as well. Uh, we just going to promise to continue to be us and continue to uh, bring you the best quality entertainment you can get. See, I'm not a professional. I'm not a professional reporter or journalist, nor do I feel like I want to be one. But I'm just here to uh, talk about sports the way I do. And with my nephew, we started this, what, two, three years ago, nephew? Was it three years ago? And we still ago. going strong, bro. This is crazy. So we appreciate you, Corn, man. Joe, you the man, bro. One of my favorite people, Corn, bro. You already know, man. Big ups to you. Appreciate that, man. We appreciate all the love, and pretty much that's why we do it. You know what I'm saying? To show our, share our thoughts, pretty much have dialogue that a lot of people want to talk about, and then we come out and debunk the stupid stuff. That's pretty bro. much what it is. Um. It's always just, you know, the whole squad, the town Sports Central, you know, we come together and we all fit well. Everybody got their own personalities. Everybody got their own opinions. We can agree. We can disagree. But it's still respect as men at the end of the day. That's yeah. why when we come on, we do lives. We do live calls, do episodes. I don't give a damn where you come from. I don't give a damn what color you look like. If you cool peoples, a man or woman, we can kick it. We can no, talk. Bro. We try to talk sports, kick it, laugh, and sometimes we're going to not talk bulls. We're going to talk about cereal, oh, ice bro. cream, That's WWE, <laughs> grits, oatmeal, Thanksgiving. We're going to talk about whatever, and we're going to kick it. We're going to learn about each other and, hey, grow as a community. Why, why hate on the next channel when we can all build a, a, a network that's conducive to winning? I want to win. And yeah. most time when people, they don't win because they be too focused on hating on the next content creators where you yeah. can reach out to them, build with them. And even if you don't even do too many appearances, shed a love, yeah. shed a love. That's what it come down to for me, bro. Yeah. And, and, uh, shot bulls podcast is for everybody. North side, West side, South side, East side, the whole United States, the whole world, nephew, because we got Facts. Philippines and, all type of it's crazy and believes all that so this is for everybody and we gonna kick it we gonna be ourselves and everything what nephew just said so y'all continue to rock with us we gonna continue to rock with y'all and let's just keep doing this thing let's kick it for sure but big ups to corn shout out to y'all make sure you hit the like button subscribe if you want to call in and be a part of our episode where we play your voicemail and react to it the number to call in and leave your voicemail is right there down below, 773-242-9219. And there was a fella that called in, but you didn't leave your name. The big dude that you're looking for in the G League, his name is Adama Sanogu. You left a 12-second voicemail, so I gave you the quick answer. <laughs> Next time, leave your name so we can show the share the love. We love to share the love. You know what I'm saying? So no, call bro. in, leave your name when you do so. But that's it from us, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to catch y'all on the next one. Shout Let's out show. my man, Corn, bro. Yes, sir. Come on, yeah. Gang. Yeah. 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 Yeah.